Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Stuart, Victor Echo 9, Charlie Foxtrot, and welcome back to the channel. On this channel, we cover everything about portable ham radio, DX chasing, contesting, you name it. Everything that I like, I like to share. Anyway, I got an interesting uh, note, note this morning from a friend of mine in Ontario about contesting. Now, there's a lot of people uh, out there who frown upon contesters and, you know, say they, go they gobble up all the bands and, you know, can't make it work for other people. And, and contests only happen maybe... Significant contest every few weeks in the amateur radio world. So I don't know where those uh, claims come that the contesters gobble up all the frequencies when, you know, five days out of the week, if it wasn't for POTA, the frequencies would be dead, deadly quiet. And there's a segment of the POTA population that frown upon co contesters as well. I know a couple people that are very vocal about anti-contesting, you know, but this interesting perspective really uh, opened my eyes about the benefits of contesting. You know, contesting... Sure, you can look at it and say, you know, it's a bunch of guys getting out there making very fast exchanges of no relevance. And But I look at it opposite, and this article actually opened up my eyes to it a bit more. So contesters are actually preparing for emergency communications. Contrary to what all those emergency communication uh, fanatics talk about, I don't look at ham radio for emergency communication, but that's just me. It can be used for it, but I'd rather trust a professional than a guy running around with a hand, a hand held on his hip with a yellow vest on. That's just me, though. But uh, contesters can actually be used to help with emergency communications, and here's why. Because contesting teaches us or practices our skills to make rapid communications and copy very inf sensitive, or not sensitive, but uh, quick information. A signal report with a, an exchange, like a grid square, or a location, or something like that. Very, very fast communications and information exchanged. So that is a way to look at contesting. And it also helps us, you know, keep our equipment up and running. You know, and yeah, you know what? There's contesters that go out and do portable contesting in the field. There's contesters that, you know, work out of their home QTH like I do with a hex beam antenna and big antenna arrays. And there's contesters who, you know, work out of their car. But I, I, that's a very interesting perspective that contesters how, uh, can be actually a good way to practice emergency communications. Very fast uh, reports of information into very far-reaching areas. One of the things I love about contesting, because there is contest that hit almost every geographic region in this world. Unlike some of the uh, portable ham radio uh, programs that are very limited in scope, contesting especially for me here in New Brunswick, I just finished working, I, fi I just finished or almost finished working the French contest this weekend. It, it enables me to work with ham radio operators in France, exchange information across a, w a wide different di uh, distance, 4,000 or so kilometers, and exchange information with people that don't necessarily speak English as a native language. So there you go. That's a very interesting take on contesting. I never looked at it that way before. 7-3, everyone. I'm Stuart, Victor Echo 9, Charlie Foxtrot. We'll see you guys in a future video.